is a uh, Gold Star television set from 1986. Here is the uh, model tag. Now this thing has an issue that uh, I believe is excessive AC line hum getting into the... Um, I have to use the secondary control on it. kind of like an older set where you have the the um, remote chassis and then the regular thing being uh, separately switched so now that'll of course uh, some people can hear the 15 kilohertz whine but uh, note the uh, fact that it's darker near the left of the screen uh, ignore the blanking that seems to be happening but when you apply a signal Really nothing does so much as happen, and the brightness control is all the way down. Now it's all the way up. Um, the camera, disregard anything it's doing, because it's doing absolutely nothing. Tint, which of course really doesn't matter much here, but um, the contrast control really is the only one that has any sort of an effect. As you can tell, again, you can see that the left side of the screen is far darker. Um, if I turn the contrast, the, the control is obviously a little dirty, but this is all kind of abnormal performance. I believe this set has electronic tuning. It may latch the thing, but channel 6 causes a little bit of interference. But Yeah, this really doesn't... I can turn the volume up. All you get is the usual hiss. I can hit auto color, which does not, well, auto color was on, which is probably why the brightness wasn't doing anything. Well, still not doing anything. But I'm going to take the back cover off and take a look. But, uh, I'm just taking a general look to see if there are any bulged filter caps. I've already taken a look off camera, but I'm going to uh, kind of pan through this so you can actually see what's in here. Here's the main tuner board and all the potentiometer controls there for um, brightness, contrast, etc. Back side of the board. The tiny speaker and audio output transformer. Um, of course, this has to be the main filter capacitor. Um, but I don't know if you saw when I paged earlier here, but there is a rather peculiar looking capacitor to say the least. It looks almost as though it's rocketed itself up, although the tabs haven't um, bent upward, but it somehow has lost or burnt off its um, protective plastic insulation. That cap is way back there, dead center of the screen. Looks a little funny, doesn't it? This other cap looks a little dirty, the red one, but uh, I think I'll just leave that be for now. But I can't really see anything else that looks too out of the ordinary as of yet. Um, here, of course, is the CRT. I'll see if you can get a good view of what this is. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to test that cap on an ESR meter, along with the main filter capacitor to see if either of them... Uh, look a little bad, but uh, I'll come back with that in a moment. Um, I tested that one capacitor, which as you can tell even has cold solder joints, um, C443. Um, that, even trying to touch my uh, ESR meter probes to that, it reads absolutely nothing, doesn't register. Um, and another thing of note is this little arrangement right here, which is supposed to, I presume, have a capacitor across it, judging from uh, the number at the center of your screen, C432, um, and looking at all the other things that were done in like this. I think it was probably like a post-production issue where they couldn't find anything that would fit on the far side of the board. 
and if this thing would actually continue to focus. Um, there's a couple others like this resistor. Um, I tested uh, the main filter capacitor with my ESR meter. It checks OK. So I'm going to presume that this is probably the issue. It's the only thing that looks obviously apparent. No matter what, even if it doesn't end up being the issue, it has to go. I'm going to test that out of circuit once I remove it in a moment. But uh, yeah, I couldn't get anything also from my uh, voltomist. It didn't register either. So yeah, I'm going to remove that now with my soldering iron and uh, check that. Uh, fending cap out of circuit. I am going to uh, see if I can test it live on camera here. I'm not even going to bother with the ESR meter because I think this thing is wide open. Um, but I'd like to see what it does if I can get all the crap uh, out from my probe on the voltomist. So I'm going to connect the ground lead of the voltomist to the uh, negative side of the cap. And I am going to take this this um, green clip lead, take it to the positive side of the cap, if I can actually do that on camera. Sorry, no, not going to work that way. See, this, fo this folks is why you don't use your um, your phone to film things, and hopefully that isn't just shorting everything. So I've got the thing set all the way over to the infinity range. It's on resistance times one, so if something actually happens, this should, in theory, cause the needle to move, which I think that is fairly self-explanatory. I'm going to move up the range. Nothing. Nothing. Slightly. Nothing. Nothing and nothing. Of course I have not readjusted, but I would expect to at least see something. Um, I went all the way up to the uh, megohm range, which I believe you have to use a special procedure to use, so that's kind of invalid. But yeah, this capacitor is wide open and trash. It's a 4.7 microfarad at 250 volts. I'm going to see if I can find something that, that will go in its place. I don't believe I have exactly that, but I might have something that I can swap in there in place of it. Replacement for this capacitor, I've soldered in a couple of leads here, um, and then got a couple clip leads. I do, technically I have something that would work. This here is a 4 microfarad Sprague Atom, but uh, I'm not installing Sprague Adams in a Gold Star. No way, no how. That would be uh, a waste of a an expensive part. Um, so I'm going to just clip it in here for now and uh, power the set on. I've already got it plugged in, which says, I guess, a mild degree of safety here. Um, and I'm going to see what happens. I better make sure I've got this connected in the right way. Most of that might not be so great. And would you look there? No more dark on one side, light on the other. It's all uniform. And I'm going to turn the contrast down to really emphasize it. Uniform throughout. So tomorrow I am going to head down to the local electronics store and buy a new capacitor. I probably ought to test some of the others that are made by this company, judging from the fact that, I don't know, but this just doesn't look to be of the highest quality. There's a couple of others in this thing made by the same manufacturer with the same kind of stretched out look on the uh, case. And uh, 
yeah, I'm going to do that, and I will uh, return behind the camera tomorrow and uh, install the capacitor permanently and uh, feed a signal into the set. From the top, before I went to the electronics store, and it's still the same night, there is another, it's very hard to see in there, capacitor that has the same look to it, all kind of, this thing will zoom. Oh, that's bringing the lighting. I wish I had. Wish it would zoom. There it goes. And that one right there has the same sort of look to it, and reads absolutely nothing on my ESR meter. Um, if I can try to do a live demonstration of that, I'm going to try to short these probes together on the ESR meter, and cause it to have some sort of a different reading before it decides it's going to. Uh... And this the ESR meter was recommended to me by Doug Harland, so I want to give him. A little bit of credit here and this is okay now it's zoomed too much but if I can find C329 in the shot that would be nice but that I guess can't be expected 329, 329, 329 all that crap where is C329 there it is, right there. So I'm going to take the probes and see if I can try to line them up enough to be able to stick it on there. I don't think I'm going to do that part on camera so much as I'm going to be um, focusing on the ESR meter itself. But know that it is okay well let's do this a little bit more intelligently let's just get rid of this crazy arrangement here that I had with the other cap and see if I can get it to want to stick on C329 gotta make sure that's shielded lest my readings will probably be fairly inaccurate so Yes, one to one, one to the other, although it, polarity does not mean anything with an ESR meter. That's connected, that's connected, and nobody's home. So I'm going to desolder that, remove it from circuit, and mark it with something to where I can be able to find it later. But, uh, yeah, this will also be replaced. I'm going to see if I can find a couple others that might be bad. But, uh, there's that. C329, it is a 6.8 microfarad at 160 volts. Um, as you can tell, the bottom's blown out of it. It read nothing on the ESR meter. And again, as before, it reads virtually nothing on the volt on the ohm meter. This thing stay on the bench. Um, but yeah, it's being touched to it now. Here's shorting the meter so you can see that, you know, the meter actually does deflect. Here is touching the other lead. Absolutely nothing. I'm not even going to bother going up the ranges. What I, am. I think just looking at it, I can say that it is junk and I will be replacing it as such. So I'll be back um, tomorrow with another part to this video. Off uh, last night, here are the new replacement electrolytic capacitors. The um, six microfarad is going to be replaced, or the six point eight microfarad is going to be replaced by this ten, since they don't offer any six point eights at the local shop. Uh, rated at one sixty volts. Um, and then the uh, 4.7 will be a 4.7 at 250. So I'm going to solder these in here. Um, I did not do anything with this. I presume some TV shop must have removed it at some point. And considering I don't know what value to replace it with, I'm just going to leave it. So um, I'll solder these in and uh, be back in a moment are soldered in place. The only thing I have yet to do 
is to trim the excess lead off since I don't believe it is I probably shouldn't be trying to do this through the viewfinder but here's the other cap C329 and I better do this uh, looking at the actual thing rather than and I would say that this set is uh, repaired um, I will be fetching my digital converter box and I will input a signal into it and uh, we will be able to uh, see how it performs. I am however going to um, before I do that take some of this uh, control cleaner or actually it's contact cleaner with silicone and shoot it into those potentiometers there because some of them seem a little uh, staticky and they, they jump about a little so I'm going to do that and uh, then I'm going to put the uh, cover back on the set and I will hook a signal to it and we'll see how it looks. And comma, I powered it on and it went bzzzt. Well, I uh, reviewed the footage and made the ultimate mistake. C443, the one that had been the problem, is soldered in backwards. At least according to my ESR meter, the thing isn't dramatically up in ESR. It hasn't bulged, but the set wouldn't power on. So I'm going to reverse the cap and pray that I didn't damage something more expensive. Um, so I'm going to do that. 0.7 microfarad. I removed it. Um, C443. Um, I've tested it again out of circuit on my ESR meter. It reads 5.2, which is well in tolerance for something of this type. Um, and I went even went a little further, tested it on my BNK Model 800 uh, capacitor analyzer for both leakage at 100 volts and capacitance, both of which it still checks fine. So I don't believe I've done extensive damage to this thing, so I'm going to reinstall it the correct way. Don't do what I do, do what I say, as a lot of people will say. Installed, um, you can find it there. C443 and reinstalled the correct way with the uh, negative side going down, which as you can tell is connected to the ground plane of the board. So I'm going to now button this whole charade back up again and camera and reinstall the cabinet and power it up once again. Um, supplied by this RCA digital converter box and this dipole antenna. So I will be getting uh, some clips of that in uh, just a moment. What was supposed to be an easy job is uh, turned for the worst simply because that capacitor caused something else to go out so the set still won't turn on. My main eye is on this uh, fuse back here which looks rather burnt and uh, I will be checking that with the Volto Mist once it warms up. Keep an eye on the meter. I have one side of it uh, connected to one side of the fuse. I'm going to uh, short first the meter so you can actually see that the that uh, the meter works. Of course. So now I will try going to the other side of the fuse, and it does nothing. The meter's still warming up, so it's drifting a little. But I think that. Uh, This is a fairly conclusive test. Luckily, I only blew the fuse. After five stores of searching since the electronics shop was closed, I finally found and installed a brand new one amp fuse. Um, I will now put the back cover on, and I did test before that that was all that was wrong. I put a clip lead across this, not on camera, but so I'm going to now reassemble the set and uh, hook a signal up to it. Assembled with the uh, fuse replaced, the two caps replaced. And as you can tell, there's no longer you know, a black spot on the left side of the screen as I showed earlier when I clipped in the uh, spray gatum. But uh, I'm going to cut to an actual signal here um, on the thing. I have the converter box hooked up and uh, I'll just turn this up a little. It looks beautiful. Um, 
very good picture, and I'm going to keep scrolling through the channels so I don't get a copyright strike. But, uh, I, uh, the camera doesn't pick up the color very well, so I'm going to adjust it up just a hair to where the thing will like it. Auto color works well, too. It's just presets, though. But, yeah, I'm adjusting it for the camera. Um... My TV20 doesn't appear to have anything right now. The signal I'm not getting very, is very good from these uh, uh, set-top antenna. I'll pass them along. I still have to get my own copy. See ya. I'll let that cool in the pan. Spend hours of time and hundreds of dollars trying to collect all the fantastic music in the power of... Yeah. Oh, wonderful. I still can't believe that a local channel decided it was a wonderful idea to broadcast QVC as a sub-channel. It just seems like a colossal waste of bandwidth. That same channel has decided that HSN also needs to be broadcast. Let's take a look at some more... You realize grilling out shouldn't Here is uh, the local independent station, uh, 38, um, WADL, owned by Kevin Adele. They also carry the Grit Network on their 38-2 sub-channel. They carry Get TV, um, which is currently airing Storm Chasers, which doesn't look like there's a storm on there. Cozy TV as well. Here is a religious station, The Word, which was rumored to be taking over the entire thing because of the spectrum allocation. They were just going to release a sub-channel from a different one. There's Justice, which is, I believe, like a court show channel. And this here is their actually... Oh, my thing is picking up a uh, an AM radio station. Here is uh, our local CW affiliate, uh, CW50. Um, here's our PBS affiliate, WTVS Detroit 56-1, which doesn't appear to be getting coming in very well. This is on other, Under the Radar Michigan, which is a local produced show um, displaying you know various travel destinations. This apparently is some... Paddle wheel steamship here in Michigan. Probably not a real steamship, though. Not coming in very clearly. Here's the kids' station. Um, and here is, of course, the ubiquitous Create channel. And it's not coming in very well. Here's our CBS affiliate. If I can just hold the antenna up, I might be able to. Which is apparently airing Long Young Sheldon. But I, I think the TV looks pretty good, and so I'll just conclude the video at that.